Hello, hello, and welcome to our first official, or at least the ones that are happening on the equinox and solstice, uh, regenerative roundtable. Uh, I've been loving starting off all of our seed sessions and gatherings with opening up a space in case anyone has any wisdom, insight, or something beautiful they want to share in order to drop us in today. So if anyone had prepared something to be able to do that, you can unmute yourself and use this space to do that. We have a, a we have a song. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. One, two, three. We, we are, are here. here. We are here. Keepers of the garden. We are here. When if not now, where if not here, who if not you and me, we are here, we are here, keepers of the garden. We, we are, are here. here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's remind us uh, this It's hard to harmonize on Zoom, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for that. I was Yeah, Zoom is not great for that. <laughs> Thank you. That was beautiful. Uh, the intentions there, regardless. Um, all right. So we have a lot to dive into today, but let me just set the stage a little bit about what these roundtables can be. Uh, there's so much happening in the seeds world. It kind of feels overwhelming and people don't have, you know, unlimited hours in the day to be able to dive through all the discourse and discord and passport channels and everything else that's going on. It seems impossible to keep up. Um, so one of the main intentions of these regenerative roundtables, let me change the view because, there we go. So one of the main intentions of these regenerative roundtables is to be able to have three days every season where we come together to try to share what's the most important things happening in the movement. So that if people only have 12 days a year that they can commit to this, then these would be the 12 days, four roundtables every year, three days each to be able to show up and hopefully get the 80% majority of what's going on in this movement. Um, so I hope that they'll evolve as we keep going and build a little bit better format. So this is just the first one. We hope to keep you know, improving on the function and form of what these sessions could be. And we're planning on the upcoming one for the December solstice to actually be partially in person too. So we'll do it digitally, but have in in place physical gatherings happening across the globe, which would be amazing. Um, before I keep going on from this, is there anyone who wants to share their intention of what they feel like these round tables could be? Because I know a lot of different thoughts were shared on this and I wanna leave a little bit of space here for us to share what we feel like the most beautiful thing that we could be doing in these round tables every season. Okay, um, before I do that, um, let me set the stage a little bit. What I'm gonna be doing a lot of is opening it up because the idea of a round table is it is us coming together, it is sharing our wisdom and it's being able to, it's mostly about asking the right questions and then leaving space for us to come to those conclusions together. Um, and it will be a, a mixture of having these open sessions where we're all together, but we'll also use a lot of breakout groups so that we can be in more intimate containers and to be able to talk about things. Uh, but the idea of a round table is it's a conversation, it's a dialogue, it's where we come together to share. So I don't necessarily think the formats are gonna be where there's a speaker serving information and everyone's just ingesting it. This is going to be a, a co-creation of us coming together. Um, so with that being said, I'll open it up again if anyone has any thoughts on, you know, what- I, I just had a, yeah. I had a question. Is, is the purpose to kind of 
uh, give a progress report on how Siege is going and uh, and what we, what's what's go, what's happening going forward and what we can do to help, or is it a broader topic? To me, I, I really hope so. That would be my intention of what we're doing with these roundtables, is to be able to provide one space for people to get a good understanding of everything that's happening. And that's with each one of the, the Seeds Commons organizations to be able to share what they're bringing to it. So, you know, Hypa might come here and share their perspective. You know, the Seeds Commons do, Samara, Renaissance Explorers, et cetera, will all be able to come here to these roundtables and be able to share what's happening from their perspective. Because oftentimes people are only getting one perspective of the organization they're in, or if you're not in an organization, you're not getting any of those. So, I mean, I'm trying to be, be caught up, but even I don't, I have no idea what's happening in any of the organizations outside of, you know, Hypa and a little bit of Renaissance Explorers, right? Um, so yes, that's definitely intention of these roundtables to have that. So, so Re Reiki, if, if your answer to Frank's question is accurate, that means there would have to be some presentations bringing us up to date what's happening and then roundtable discussions. So it would be both presentations and discussions, or is it only going to be the, the discussion of whatever topic is brought up? Um, great question. Sorry, let me provide a little bit more framing. Um, there's three days here. So the first day, um, we have a proposal that we're bringing to the table, and I'm going to pass it to a couple other people, and we're going to introduce that proposal, and we're going to go over that. And that's one of the big quote, announcements that we we're talking about. Um, and I think it got a little bit more hype than was necessary. Um, the second day is then going to go over the seeds comments and how we can then embody that and what that actually looks like. And that's more of where we're going to have more of a dialogue and other organizations that are going to be embodying that seeds comments are going to be showing up and speaking about what they're doing and what they're bringing to seeds. And then the final day of the round table is around, um, I guess we can call it our, our roadmap or our compass, but it's what we're going to be doing for the next three months. So then this is how we discuss, okay, how do we align? What are we focused on? What does the next three months look like? And then the next round table, we look back, we reflect, we learn, and that's what the first day session is about. We bring proposals about how we might improve what we're doing here. And then we use the next three days to kind of dive deeper realign, refocus, and move on for the next season. Um, so that's kind of the, the general pattern here. Um, what we also are seeing with the round table is anyone can set up any um, discussion on any topic that they have and then add it to the events channel so that we can have a lot of different breakout groups happening within these three days. So it might evolve into being more of a festival style where maybe it is 12 hours a day of potential content and you can dive in and have discussions about. Um, so it is kind of, let's try to pack as much as we can into a three-day period so people can commit to those three days and be able to get as much as they can out of it. Um, but we only have the three main sessions, which is what I've just highlighted here. Does that make sense? Or is there any other questions mm -hmm. on the format of the round table? Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Reiner. Yeah, when the question is, uh, what do I expect from the round tables it's a kind of uh like a huge family meeting from a family distributed all around the planet and there you have this information flows as well but like the singing we started with <laughs> so in a big family i'm not aware who with each person and and uh, who will be married who is married who will get divorced where are tensions and so on which children are born uh, which new organizations will spring off of this family and to get an individual uh let's say touch uh i hope our meetings will provide that. So a emotional basis for those information flows. Mm. Thank you. Gail. Hi, um, nice to meet you. I'm relatively new. I come here from Earth Regenerators and uh, we have our own little mini seeds group there. I'm excited to be here, but unfortunately I work, so I can't attend for three days. So my question is, um, for someone like me, if I were to set aside, let's say an hour over the next couple of days, uh, when, when would it would be the best time for me to attend other than now during the introduction? 
Um, that, I mean, that really depends on what your focus is. Today's session is going to be a lot about grounding what we're doing here and then bringing up this announcement and discussing it a bit. Tomorrow is focused on the Seeds Commons. So if you're an organization planning on using the Seeds Commons, joining the Seeds Commons, getting funding through it, setting up a do, setting up an organization, anything like that, tomorrow is definitely a session worth joining. Um, if you're more generally focused on, okay, what is happening in Seeds? Where are we going? What should I be focused on? How could I best contribute? And you're more interested in that, that would be the final day where we go over the roadmap. Um, and discuss with the next okay group. i'm probably number two so maybe i should tell you the end of the day then yeah more okay all right thank you so much thank you okay so julio and then we'll get on with uh, the rest of today's topics thank you yeah i'm happy to be here i just wanted some uh, clarity on who is organizing this series of events uh, is it haifa is it the seeds commons or and, and who is facilitating these calls uh, this, these days, during these days, and who should we seek in, in case we need assistance? I don't know, it, it was not very clear for me in the invitation. Um, it's not very clear to me either because it's emerging. Um, it's something that we had talked about and I just uh, took the initiative to make it happen. I know Tyler's talking about um, hosting tomorrow's session. Um, and some of the Samara and Renaissance Explorers have put together. Um, Renaissance Explorer groups are also focused on hosting the third one, which is around the milestone map, because they were working on making that document. Um, today is I'm, I'm hosting. Uh, and this is just kind of the, the ad hoc self-emergent process of putting this together and just seeing it through. Um, so you're seeing it real time. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. If, if you have any suggestion for a session or an event you want to put up, reach out to Danny and she would be able to add that to the seeds event calendar. And then whoever shows up to that event, you can show up and have your discussion. Uh, so we're just having these be really dynamic. So you guys get it. Um, Tyler. Yeah, appreciate that. Reiki just wanted to follow you up there um, and say it, it has been quite emergent. And I offered to host tomorrow's um, discussion around the commons and just in case anyone's getting like a pang of fear of like, oh my God, gotta present what we're doing. That, that's not entirely the intention for anyone to be coming tomorrow thinking that this is like an official Seeds Commons meeting just because the Seeds Commons is still a proposal. And so we're still kind of seeing what happens there, but it is a chance for those folks, whether individuals or people associated with DHOs to come and really sink into the question of like, what are we stewarding in Commons? Um, so there will, there will be more information on what the commons is proposed as. There will be more um, chances to kind of discuss what that could look like. But really, we're hoping to hold a community conversation around identifying what it is that we're really stewarding together through this framework of the commons. Thank you, Tyler. Um, yeah, so if you're feeling inspired to participate in hosting the roundtable, then just reach out to me and I can see where you might be able to fit in. Um, now, moving on to today a little bit and the announcement we wanted to bring up. Um, so I'm sure most of you have felt it. Our experiment has been really wild the last couple of years, um, uh, as, I'm, uh, as we can imagine it would be when we're trying to design a new economic system and governance system at the same time while kind of embodying it. So it's been a wild ride. Um, and what a small group, along with myself, has been doing the last couple of months is just deeply analyzing and trying to figure out like if we could do it all over again, or rather, if we could evolve, what could that actually look like? You know, how might we be able to move on to the next stage of our growth here? Um, so it's something that we've been deeply thinking about, and the announcement is around uh, setting the stage for that is talking about how could we relaunch? How could we rebuild momentum, give more clarity of focus of what we're doing here, redesign some of the governance and economics um, experiments that we've been running for the last couple of years um, to be more sound and to better serve the needs that we have today. Um, a big part of this is around the creation story. So, you know, every culture, civilization, they all are founded with some type of creation story or myth at the heart of why they exist. And the ones that have the strongest, most you know, embodied creation story, the ones that last throughout the ages. And that's something I think Seed has you know, generally been missing. 
you know, the, the version 1.0 of seeds is kind of enigma. Most people don't know how seeds was formed and that was kind of intentional. Um, one of the first creation stories we thought would be great is if it was just kind of unknown. People didn't really necessarily know where it came from. Um, we found that kind of to be lacking. And there was very few people who participated in the first launch of seeds. You know, maybe we had a few hundred uh, maximum at that time. Uh, our community has grown substantially since then. And we feel like maybe there's an opportunity here to bring in a lot more of the wisdom of the community that showed up and redesign what our creation story might actually look like. You know, how could we relaunch seeds from a higher perspective? Um, so that's just kind of setting the stage. And right now there's been maybe nine people who have been discussing uh, a project proposal. Some of them are on the call today. And what I'm gonna do is pass the mic over to any one of them who wants to open up and share what some of their intentions for this proposal and project was. So if they want to just raise their hands and we can go through them in order. Um, so I'll start with Nick. Uh, yeah, so when, when I heard about this idea to just kind of like, what if we could do it all over again? How, how can we move forward? I thought it was really crazy and, and exciting. And I feel like what we really want to do is we want to, um, my, my goals with, with, with it would be to rebuild seeds at a higher level of integrity, uh, to have sound tokenomics, which seeds once was lacking a little bit, and to reward skin in the game. And that's really it. And uh, really the, the reason it's very important is that the energy that we create the system with will always kind of permeate, permeate throughout the ecosystem. And it's kind of the seed that it's coming from. So this seed needs to be in the highest integrity level possible. And we had some issues with this to begin with. So yeah, if, if we can uh, improve this, I, I'm all for it. And that would be my intention. The, the highest level of integrity possible at the core level, at the seed level, so that this will grow out into more integrity. Oh, That's it for me. Thanks, Nick. Um, I imagine some of you might be confused, but don't worry, we're gonna wrap up what we're actually talking about after we go through some of the intentions. Um, Arena, Soren. Yeah, thank you, Reiki. Uh, so I've been quite involved lately in seeds in different parts of this ecosystem and maybe just to share a little bit of my thoughts and how I'm seeing things now. And I'm seeing like a great desire and energy for growth and a lot of people who are bringing value here and who feel they are aligned and they want to contribute to seeds and bring seeds into the world. And I feel there are a lot of reasons to celebrate at this point. In the same time, I'm also seeing uh, a lot of tensions around some of the fundamentals of seeds, like the economics and the governance and how things are working, which definitely could be uh, evolved and could be better. And in the same time, I feel there are challenges in dealing with the complexity of what seeds is. Uh, seeds as a community of citizens who need to take decision together who need to further evolve their mechanism on one part, then it seeds as a currency, which has different mechanisms, different way of looking at things. And then third is like seeds the movement, which is what are the stories are we telling to people and how, how we share about what seeds is. And um, there is a lot of complexity to navigate. And I think there are there is a lot of energy that's coming, but a lot of energy that's being wasted because there are not like clear pathways of how can people engage. Uh, I'm seeing also different perception of where seeds is now is like, how, how is seeds doing? Are we on a good path? Are we not? We don't know, all sorts of ideas. And I'm also seeing that um, there is not, I'm not seeing, th this is like a really honest share. <laughs> I'm not seeing a lot of care toward the well-being of seeds as a whole. It seems that we are pretty much distributed, yes, yet we cannot come together to take care of seeds entirely. 
And yeah, we are like 400 citizens now. And I feel that our ability to sense and react to what's happening in the ecosystem is not quite working. I feel the system is a bit rigid and, um, and we still need to work on that a little bit. And from my perspective, we are at the turning point. And that turning point requires quick response and a lot of systemic change in order for us to evolve. So I think the conversation that we need to have is like this one in these times. How do we want to evolve together? Uh, that's me passing back to you, Reiki. We'll just keep flowing it through. Thank you so much, Irina. Uh, we'll send it to Alex. Thanks, Reiki. Um, yeah, for, for, for me, the idea of a relaunch is uh, uh, most of all to re-engage the community around seeds. Uh, I've been uh, participating into the project since the, uh, you know, uh, the early days, and we've been through a lot of different phases and uh, a lot of the, um, uh, fantastic adventures. Uh, but what I'm uh, seeing now is that there's uh, a little bit of... Um, um, you know, a situation where the interest of the community or at least the intensity uh, is a bit lowered. And I think a relaunch will really help us to refocus together and re-create uh, this energy that we need to be successfully launching uh, seeds. And I also feel that we need to experiment seeds as a currency, you know, and uh, play with it a little bit more and um, uh, try to project ourselves into what seeds could be for all of us, you know, and how it could change our lives. So uh, for me, the relaunch is uh, also about that. Yeah. Passing it back to you, Reiki. Uh, feel free to pass it to the next person, but anyway, <laughs> thanks, Alex. Uh, Anna, take it away. Mm, thank you. Um, I guess what I want to share now is that for the folks here who know me, I think you've, some, some people here have heard me say that I am very much um, in tune with energy and I follow flow. Most of the times I do not know why I'm doing something or where why I'm going somewhere and participating in a group. I just know that I'm supposed to be there. And I do trust that at some point it will make sense for my rational mind, which is quite active also <laughs> and keeps asking questions. Um, and I had been feeling for, I haven't been in seeds for that long, but for the past couple of months, I had been feeling this energy and this, this decrease in intensity and in passion throughout the community and in myself. And I had been forcing my way through that and forcing the movement forward, at least in myself and in carrying the couple of threads that I'm <laughs> involved in within this beautiful ecosystem. But it felt forced. It felt like I was making way too much effort. And I don't think that's how it should be. I think it should be easy. I think it should be joyful. I think it can be playful and fun. And so when I did hear about this insane idea of Reiki, <laughs> I was incredibly excited because of all the reasons that I just stated. And also because when I first read the, the tokenomics of seeds, which I agree with need, need improvement, <laughs> I was very drawn to the um, uh, kind of respecting the natural cycles of life and death. And I give a lot of value to that. And I do believe that death and rebirth is an incredibly integral part of this whole experiment. And so, yeah, I was and am very excited with this project relaunch. I don't know how we're calling it yet, but 
with this announcement and this new thing because I do feel that it is needed from an energetic perspective. Perspective, I feel that it's a, a way of grounding and seeding trust into this community. And also from a very rational perspective, we can improve so many aspects of seeds. So why not take the, the time now to improve the tokenomics, to improve the governance, because they desperately need some more wisdom infused into them. So yeah, that's me. And I will pass it back to you, right? Because I don't know whose hands is raised. No problem. Thank you, Anna. I will send it to you, Franz. Thanks, Raiki. And thanks, everyone, for, for the, those pieces of wisdom. Yeah, my intention in this beautiful space gathered with all of you here across the world is, is really building up on what has been said, this journey towards further coherence and alignment. Now, there's been an epic wild ride with a lot of learnings, and I think those learnings need to be harvested. And everybody here has their own insights as to what those learnings are. But we really haven't had this opportunity to bring all of these learnings into one space and and together figure out what learnings or what across the journey we have learned that we want to continue in those journeys in that journey or what we want to leave behind. I think it's also very important. And yes, we've had a lot of uh, successes, but also a lot of challenges. And we are at the stage of seeding a new economy while at the same time building capacity for regeneration, which includes building state-of-the-art tools, governance, trust protocols, languages, bridging cultures, etc. This is a massive undertaking and this naturally takes a lot of time, especially in this beginning phase where a culture is starting to crystallize and spaces like this are perfect ways to start harvesting together and co-creating a new culture, which is at the very core of what SEED is all about. Um, what I see in the ecosystem is also a, a new culture of money successfully beginning to take shape. And, and it is only little time after its birth and it already wants to crawl. And even though it's still small, it is already incredibly successful because we're also building on millinery wisdom from many cultures around the world. And what, what's happening is really we're scaffolding the nervous system of an economy that is already beginning to, to trickle upwards slowly. And as the tools improve and the trust protocols are established and fine-tuned, which is also a big core of what this upgrade uh, means to be, we have a great opportunity to continue to, to course correcting and learning from uh, the experiences that have been gathered so far. And yeah, I think there's a wonderful opportunity here to put all these pieces of wisdom together and decide as a, as a group what we want to carry forth and what we want to leave behind. Um, and yeah, I'm echoing that there is, there is a good need to, to upgrade what we have done and already make this, this learnings reachable to everyone in the movement <clears throat> because that's one of the challenges as it as the very nature of a decentralized movement is very difficult to as ideas or insights happen to really make them known across the movement so i i find that's one of the core things that this place brings is the opportunity to come together and and expand or bring these ideas to everyone here so that we can give it a new spirit of refreshment and lightness and flow. So that's my intention here. Um, I can see who's next. So I can see Alan is next in line. So pass it on to you, brother. Good to see you. Thank you, Franz. Good to see everyone here. Um, I mean, I can only uh, echo and agree with uh, all of the positive things that have been said here about where Seeds has gotten. And um, if I think about the one thing specifically, if I just ask myself right now, what do I think Seeds needs the most to continue growing and improving? I'd say um, that it's coherence of what is there 
coherence of the information and coherence of what is possible. So what I believe is really uh, something very important for anything that we wanna do, whether it's governance, tokenomics or projects is that we have some space that could be the seeds library or it could be its own website. That's not too relevant, but that we have a space where we have really a beautiful full map of what is going on in seeds, how that is connected to the things where it, where it has a connection. So the projects or other entities that are working together with seeds and also how you, as I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a completely new member here, how you can participate within those things. What is possible? So really an upgraded, massively upgraded, just and simple to use map or mechanism. I like the word map with a good and clear legend. Where can you go and do what? Where is what? And also, where can you find the information that you are currently looking for, that you're currently interested in? Um, and yeah, I believe that that is something that is essential for, for, for uh, seeds moving forward. Because seats is a really complex thing. This is a really complex and new pioneering, um, you know, endeavor that we're that we're in here together. So yeah, we we need to be able to deal with this complexity and the people, the amount of people that is growing. So um, yeah, I would say I think that that should be a huge project in this relaunch um, kind of uh, project or whatever we want to call it. But I, I would really want that to be something big where perhaps a whole circle in Haifa and Seeds works together on it to make this easy for everyone to yeah, just navigate throughout this whole system. Thank you uh, for listening. And I believe Mark is next. Hello, everybody, all of you beautiful faces. I do enjoy seeing the faces. Um, so what I bring is my intention for this space here is uh, a, a space of creative, a space of play, a space of, of joy and, and curiosity and, and welcoming in the, the magic that, that simply is ready to speak to us. That's the space that, that I am holding in this conversation. And I understand the um, uh, importance of uh, viewing how we are exploring together, what we've achieved, celebrating that. Uh, I think that is extremely powerful, the gratitude, the appreciation, um, and that's the space that I wanna hold. Um, I want this to be a, a, I'm seeing Aria's piece of paper. I want this to be a piece of paper for us to, uh, to see our fingerprints or a piece of paper for us to, uh, to write down and to imagine what the path that we wanna take looks like now. Um, during the process of, uh, of conversation with uh, the people that have been speaking about this over the last uh, uh, a couple of weeks, um, what has come up for me is a sense of uh, that I am not ready to know what that path is and that I want to hear, I want to share, I want to participate with more voices, with more inspiration, with more guidance, with more coming from the future as to what wants to happen. And so that's what I bring to this conversation today is a desire to uh, quietly and playfully and in an excited way know that, the, that what is coming is speaking to us now. And from that space, we can then write down what it looks like. And I'll pass it over to Lisa. Thank you, Mark. I'll just speak to Francis' computer. <laughs> Um, well, I also, I think I echo Nick in that my first sentiments were, wow, this is crazy, this is exciting, 
maybe a bit scary. Um, but it's also so beautiful because we can at any point decide, hey, we want to reimagine or make changes to our governance, to our token, do something around the utility of our token. And um, I think what I would like to bring and share with you is um, I see so much value that is being created on the ground, all around, um, by regenerative agriculturalists, by builders, growers, marketers, um, small businesses, self-organized groups, families. They're growing regenerative conscious products. They're creating marketplaces. They're building local circular economies. And they are all using seeds. Um, so my focus in, in all of this is to sort of try to make sure <laughs> that any large changes we might be talking about here take all of these people into account. Um, all these people are not on Discord. <laughs> they might not be much online at all. They might not even speak English. And I know a lot of people who also don't read and write. To me, these people, they are an incredible part of the ecosystem. I dare say they are a very large part of it. Um, they are not residents or citizens. They are mostly all visitors. Um, but they are, at least in my point of view, the real stewards of seeds. The ones on the ground who are really building this uh, regenerative renaissance that we're all talking about, dreaming about, that we're all weaving. They are holding trust and faith in this movement, in seeds, and in all of you who are here dreaming up beautiful decisions. So I just, I wish that we all, in everything we do, we keep these people in mind. Uh, we try to connect with them, we try to bring them in, and we really advocate uh, for and with them. Um, so that's what I would like to share. And uh, thank you for, for your time, but thank you for being here, for having open and beautiful minds, streaming this work together. And I will pass it on to Anelos. Thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing these very, very important perspectives. And everyone else also here, for everyone's already been set and so wonderful to see you all. Um, I like to give a few story codes. <laughs> So you can always understand a lot about our own personal journey from our name, um, but also if we're looking at what's happening in our ecosystem, what's happening in our process as seeds, I think it's important to reflect for a moment and what are the key words with which we're expressing ourselves, what's also within the logo. Now we're using the words um, renaissance, which means of course rebirth, and we are using the word regenerative, which means that the rebirth that we are going through uh, is really to support life as a whole um, and creating conditions for life to thrive. In our logo, seeds logo, we have the butterfly and we have the seeds itself as a seed of life and a seed of wisdom. Now the butterfly uh, has to be a caterpillar first. <laughs> and it sounds to me like we've been, we were born as a caterpillar and now this little organism is starting to realize it might be time to cocoon. <laughs> so we are feeling as a collective, it's time for a rebirth, right? Um, and um, we, we can feel our little wings already, um, but there is a transition to make. We can't just go straight into caterpillar consciousness, which it crawls on the ground um, to start to now spread our wings. So. Maybe while we are going through these three days, we could actually collectively imagine that there's a huge cocoon that's spinning around this collective, beautiful virtual space. And what we can do with that cocoon is that we can give to that cocoon um, anything that needs to be composted. Because what's beautiful in that cocoon is that it will release the enzymes of dissolution and it will turn that caterpillar body into a nutrient soup. So there are things within our experiments that we feel it served its purpose, even if it was just to learn something, but it's not going to have the structure to carry us forward into the future. Um, so instead of us rejecting that or feeling what was a waste of time or feeling, you know, 
um, agitated about that, we can say that's great. <laughs> that was the caterpillar stage. So we're going to give that to the cocoon. We're going to give that to the enzymes of this solution. And we're going to ask those enzymes of this solution to please break that down, break that down in our, in our belief systems, break it down in whatever structures we were holding on to our expectations and let it be transformed into nutrients, which is our shared learning, our wisdom, our understanding, and also through this process as a collective, our healing, where we have felt perhaps not heard or not understood so that there is a deepening trust. And then together also start to sense into what wants to emerge. What's that butterfly in us? So that if in those days we can be aware of both the caterpillar in us, the cocoon as the holding space. Sometimes we are that enzyme of dissolution because we will be speaking to what I think this should be, um, should go or die and speak also to the emergence of the butterfly consciousness and capacities in us. So I just wanted to offer those story codes as a holding for how we can go through that process. And with that, I give it to Ray and Stanley. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'll go first. Uh, hi, I I'm fairly new to Seeds as well. Um, I think June we joined. And um, just listening to everybody's perspective and wanting to share also. And I feel that the, the concept around the butterfly is, is also I'd like to add about transformation that when that imaginal cells are transforming, there is those ones that are still like the caterpillar and that are still holding on to the old ways. And it's okay that we recognize them and then we let them go with just surrendering to that transformation into the new, which is unknown. But I think mm. collectively, if we hold the vision of what it is that we're moving towards, that is what is most going to happen. If, if we allow the, the going back to the caterpillar, we will only uh, hinder our progress towards a vision. And I think like the shamans hold the vision always of where they're moving towards, it will unfold for us. And to not be afraid to allow that flexibility to happen, as in nature, we, we allow things to happen. We don't force them. And just uh, lastly, to say how it would be very um, useful to have a common thread for all of our ideas and projects to pull together the tapestry of seeds so that we can report on what has been working, um, what hasn't been working, and then to leave behind things that are not working, almost the way the rose reports back to the main rose bush in nature. Maybe we need a common thread to hold and integrate all our ideas so that they don't get lost in, in the ether. So I feel that there's something that we need to integrate our ideas and have a common thread running through mm. all of the projects within SEEDS. So thank you. And yeah, just if I can add to that, the, the common thread that feeds through um, is there's so many great ideas from what we've explored within SEEDS. You have the Eco Village, um, the video that Raiki did, and that included having almost like a local um, token that ties in with seeds. You know, and having an incubator hub, which again was another thing that was discussed in, in the things we've looked at. And to try, you know, the events, the festivals, um, the proposal we're just putting in is, is a similar sort of thing where it's, Let's have a hub where people can physically come to, learn about seeds, discuss about a regenerative economy, discuss um, transformation, conscious learning, you know, all these things, but in a space where it's human to human connection, because, you know, Dandy and I are really much into the human to human connection, whereas the digital, we you know, we find a little bit of difficulty navigating some of it, you know, because you've got Haifa, then there's a cryptocurrency, then there's everything else. But I just think having these hubs that are all almost satelliting around seeds, feeding back and then saying, OK, this worked um, over here in Brighton. This didn't work over there in um, Harare and Zimbabwe. You know, it's but we can just feed that back and create this information flow 
where suddenly it's it's just picked up very very quickly what's working and what what isn't like dandy says so yeah that's i and i would just love for more of the things that have almost got buried um from the original concepts like i said the eco village one um the events wristband where it's an RFID chip or something. So again, it's now physical payments um, that can be used through the hub, through all the collaborations with the hub, and it gets the community involved and then they can decide how deep, how far they want to go with seeds and, you know, with the hub. So thank you. Um, I will pass it to... I'll, I'll bring Brilliant. it back to myself. Oh, sorry, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, just putting my facilitator hat on. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to ground this a little bit more because I think I opened it up too wide and I don't want to necessarily feel like we're getting lost here. Um, and we can do some breakout groups here afterwards where we can dive in and share all of these ideas, come back and do a harvest to close all this out. But what I open this up with is inviting this concept of doing a relaunch. So some of you guys have heard that throughout everyone shares, but now we're just making that clear that that was what the proposal and the announcement is about. It's like, it's how can we actually relaunch seeds and create a different type of foundation for it to be able to reset it. Um, because, you know, seeds isn't protocols. I've heard you know, a couple of times that people are saying, you know, I'm losing faith in seeds because the governance isn't working the way I thought it should, or the economic system's not working. So I'm losing faith in this protocol. But seeds isn't a protocol. Seeds is a community. We are making these protocols. So what we've discovered over the last couple of years is maybe some of these protocols aren't working. But what we stepped into is this process where the technology is building our community rather than community building the technology. And of course, this is going to be an infinite feedback loop, and we're always going to be being built by and with the technology that we're creating. But right now, some of that technology has been too limiting, and it's creating the community we don't want and creating more tensions um, and not necessarily serving us in the way that it can best serve us. So that's what we're talking about here is for us to pause, reflect, look back the last couple of years that we've been working together and redesign a different type of launch. Um, redesign the economics and governance systems so that they can work better. <laughs> we're, we're never probably going to get there where it's feeling perfect for everyone, but there are some pretty critical flaws that we've uncovered that it would be nice to actually patch up to do a relaunch with. Um, and with every proposal, I mean, a kite only flies because it's grounded to the ground. So what I loved at the beginning of this is we really opened it up big and we want to dream. And that's actually what I want to do for the breakout groups going forward is for us to be untethered and say, okay, what could seeds become? You know, what is that future state where we're wanting it to be and how do we best get there? So I want that to kind of be a, a topic of discussion for the breakout groups and then you can actually get to meet each other. Um, but as I was saying, a kite can only fly because it's grounded to the ground. And what a pattern I would love to see in seeds is that every proposal comes with a grounded proposal where it actually breaks it down and says, this is what we're actually bringing to the table. So this is something that we've been putting together for the last couple months is the foundation of what a relaunch could look like. And we're not necessarily going to get into that fully on this call because it's all laid out in a document and I'm going to share it afterwards. Um, but we can touch on some of the high key points of it at the end of this discussion after we've gone as high as we can, then we can ground it. And then we can see where that dissonance lies between where we want it to be going and where this proposal is going to say that it's going to take us. And then we can modify and upgrade that proposal. Um, and everything works with restrictions. So there's a because we can get lost in conversation for years if we're thinking about how to do a relaunch. So this particular project has a deadline of the November new moon to put it up as a proposal and for it to be launched by the, the next regenerative round table coming up in the winter solstice or summer solstice, depending where you're at. Um, so that's the, the time schedule we have right now is for the next three months for us actually to come together as a community, kind of redesign what our relaunch looks like and then actually launch it from that new Seeds 2.0, whatever we want to call it. You know, I've heard some people call it like Phoenix rising from the ashes. So I, I love that metaphor. Um, but we can relaunch Seeds coming this December, and that could be the official start of this new protocol that we've launched. Our mission goal is to say, how do we look back and most equitably compensate people who have brought us here so far? Currently, things didn't line up equitable. Haifa got a larger share. I've seen so many incredible people bringing their whole hearts and talents to this place, but they have no value reflected back. So that's not in reciprocity. So we've missed out on some of the, the regenerative protocols that we've designed. So that's part of our mission here is how do we actually say, you know, look back and accurately account for the people who have showed up to this movement to make it what it is. 
and make sure that seeds is being launched from a fair foundation. Um, so I have Julia with a hand raised and then Daya real quick. So I'll let these two speak. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into some breakout groups where there'll be four or five of you in each group. So you can actually get to know and meet each other a little bit more. And the discussion topic will be around this concept of a relaunch. What does that mean to you? What do you think that could mean? What could it embody? And we could just really discuss that from an, an, an untethered place. And then we come together afterwards and harvest whatever came from that exercise. Um, cool, Julia. Actually, before I pass it off, so I've given a, a roadmap that we can finish today's roundtable with. Does anyone have any objections to that roadmap or a different route that you think we could take? Um, Reiki, we're just a little confused. We were kind of expecting a proposal, sort of an outline for a proposal. So um, the first, you had said at the beginning, there were nine people involved and I took a bunch of notes. My understanding was they were outlining the intention of the proposal. So I'm, yeah, help, yes, help us out. Right. Um, uh, that's what I was saying about the tethering. We do have a proposal but this is something that's still meant to be evolved on. So we've been working on this. It's really technical. It's more from an economic and governance lens. Um, it's less from the more beautiful world we're wanting to bring in lens, which is what I'm trying to open up a little bit more in this discussion. Um, so I could share that proposal near the end of this conversation and then you can look into it afterwards. Um, does that answer your question? Well, I don't, you know, I'd rather know what the proposal is than go into beautiful language at this point, but that's just me. I don't so know. it guides our thought process so that we're kind of holding that as a, as a thread that, that there's some work and thought and intention put behind in our conversation. It just feels a little backwards to share it at the end. Um, all right, let's go with a little decentralized governance real time. We have two ways to vote. You can use heart or you can use your thumbs up. So everyone can use the reactions or just do it personally. You know, you can make a heart. Um, heart, if we want to dive into breakout groups first before seeing the proposal, or a thumbs up if you would rather see the proposal, spend 15 minutes on that, and then dive into breakout groups. So thumbs up if you want to see the proposal first, heart if you'd rather, there's a whole lot of thumbs ups. Okay, so that's what we're going to do then. Um, first, I'll pass it to Julio and then Daya, and then I could take it back to discuss a little bit about the proposal and anyone else who wants to chime in on that can do so. Uh, Julio. Hi there, thank you. So yes, I am going to speak about this relaunch, but in a different perspective from, from my perspective, you know, I would like to say that I am feeling tired and I'm feeling overwhelmed and I feel unsafe sometimes, you know, because um, I see a lot of heroics. I see seeds up to now has been made on top of a lot of heroic acts, people doing really great things and going on campaigns and building stuff and building software, expressing the way they, they want seeds to be. I mean, th there was a lot of heroic efforts up to now. And this is great to start something up. Uh, this is the energy that we need to start something up. But after a while, being a hero will kill you. <laughs> it, heroes die, you know, because they have to take on overwhelming uh, efforts and kill huge creatures, you know, that kind of uh, myth mythological stuff. And so in order to grow, I see my, I need structure. I need uh, some some sort of hierarchy, you know, and, and when I say hierarchy, people just get scared of, hey, you're going to build, you know, uh, the typical pyramid stuff, stuff again and bringing bosses, CEOs and stuff like that. We don't want that anymore. This is the old world that we want to move away from. But when we move away from that, we kind of reject hierarchy in a way that we don't even want to be called leaders anymore. Because because, oh, I'm not a leader. I'm just doing my heroic thing here. You know, I, after that, I'm done. You can do it. I, I'm not going to lead anyone, you know. So we kind of reject leadership even. We kind of reject hierarchy even. So, and, and this is very bad because it's, it's hard to ground somewhere. And we need to ground. We need to have, even a village needs structure. Even, even a human being 
needs structure, needs hierarchy. Nature is hierarchical everywhere. So there are other ways to build hierarchy, not with command structures, but with actual proposed purpose structures, you know, like, like scope. You have something that's wider, something that's uh, smaller, and uh, holographic ways of building hierarchy. And we, I, I don't see any way of for seeds to grow otherwise than building such structure and, and stop being heroic. We're going to get dead if, we're, if we keep doing that. And we are tired. I am tired. I see Reiki being tired. I see a lot of people here being very tired of being heroes, you know? So in order to move ahead, we need this structure. Uh, and I say, uh, and how to do this? Uh, we have one hint, that's the, the do's, right? That's one possible way to grow to this seeds 2.0 thing. Maybe instead of having one do that's Haifa, we actually have holographic do's and a holographic way of creating structure and not no longer having heroes all, all over, but having uh, those taking care of specific parts of the huge undertaking that is seeds. So, and that's where Seeds Commons is heading. And, and that's one way to stop being tired, stop being overwhelmed. You just know there are some do's you can connect to the ones that you feel called upon and you have much more clarity, much more structure, membranes. You know, it's not just, just come and you see there's a lot, lot of things to do. People get overwhelmed by that. So I get overwhelmed by that. And I'm here for like maybe almost a year and I still don't know everything about everything, you know? So what, what, I, what I mean is, yes, we need to grow. And I, in my perspective, the the response to that is that there is a lot of uncertainty, a lot of heroics, and we need structure, we need hierarchy, uh, uh, the good kind of hierarchy, the one that helps nature grow, and helps, uh, you know, vegetables grow, and, and cities grow, and ecosystems grow. So that's, that's what I, because today I, I, I heard a lot of great many people bringing lots of great things uh, until now, but most of that is lost. We, we don't have a way to ground all that. So it was beautiful. It was inspiring. I heard the need of maps. I heard the need of proposals, but some of that will just be lost because we don't have this structure in place yet. So that's what I feel unsafe to share uh, most times, you know, because I, I miss this, this structure, this, uh, clear process, the uh, clarity of what's going to happen today. I, I see some people today nervous because they, they are not clear what's going to happen today. We're just, you know, trying to move from here to there. I mean, we are here with this sense that we want to build this great new thing and relaunch seeds. This is amazing. But let's, I mean, someone has to try to come with some structure. I, I mean, Reiki is, is doing this. Uh, uh, a heroic act and trying to, to do that. But unless we, we kind of really ground ourselves and, and, and bring this structure, I, I don't see any other way for us to grow. So that's my, my perspective. Thank you. Ooh, uh, I think that was actually a really beautiful lead in, Julio, because that is part of the reason for doing this relaunch is when we first set out to do seeds, there was just Haifa. Haifa was the only organization planning on launching seeds, getting seeds to go live, and then in the future, there would be more organizations helping launch it. That actually didn't work out that way. A lot more energy showed up to help seeds get launched well before go live because we still haven't reached it yet. But the original economics was only designed to best reward Haifa. Haifa was the only one having tools to distribute these seeds to people who were you know, helping build seeds and grow it out. Um, Haifa was the only one that had the tools to do decentralized governance. Um, but we quickly learned that Haifa couldn't capture all the energy that wanted to come into seats. That was just an assumption we made at the beginning of this that ended up not being true. <laughs> so that's another big reason why we want to relaunch it is because we want to relaunch from the more accurate assumptions that there's more than just Haifa that is launching seeds. And to give each one of these organizations the same opportunities that Haifa was afforded in the same way to be able to reciprocate value that are that's showing up to help build this. Um, 
So yeah, let me dive now into this really confusing thing that I think the, the first hour of the lead in here, sorry, everyone, but for those who have uh, stuck with us, let's dive into it. And I will share a link here if you want to follow along on your own. Okay, so why all the theatrics? Because this proposal is um, talking about changing the price of seeds. Um, this was originally called a fair launch project because we wanted to relaunch from more fair foundation. Um, originally, when we had launched this, we assumed we were going to have a really active storytelling engine from the you know penny price up to ten cents, and hoping that you know tens of thousands of people would be able to acquire seeds at a penny. Um, however, for a lot of different reasons, that didn't necessarily happen, um, and we artificially, in some cases, grew the price of seeds from one penny up to ten cents but we didn't actively grow out the community and let people know about this opportunity. Furthermore, as you're all identifying today, um, SEEDS is just as crazy and chaotic and confusing and probably just as risky as it was three years ago, at least for people who aren't deeply intimately familiar with this. So to say that we're you know, better compensating risk, um, that's a longer topic. But long story short, why we made this the way we did is because we're talking about changing the price that we're selling SEEDS for this new Seeds 2.0 Seeds. Um, and since that was kind of quote insider information, we wanted to keep it a really small number of people. So only 11 people knew about it. And we made sure that they couldn't buy seeds or tell anyone about this. So that was part of the conditions for being part of this project is that they could no longer purchase seeds and you know, maybe take advantage of this opportunity. Um, so what we've done kind of to set the stage is we took a snapshot of the blockchain on September 21st. So we kind of you know, froze in place what everything looked like at that point in time. So this is a way for us to be able to look back and be able to change things. Um, and then the article was published on September 22nd. Okay, so what does this actually mean? So I'm not gonna dive into all of this. I'm just gonna touch on the key points and then we can open up to a little Q&A and then dive into breakout groups. And then for whoever wants to, there's a lot of information that just gets into all of the details throughout the rest of this document. So the biggest thing that's on my mind and what you know kept me up at night and for wanting to take a heroic action was I didn't think that you know, it was as fair or inclusive of a launch as possible. I thought we, we could do a whole lot better of a job. I mean, we are still sub 10,000 people. Some of the alliances that we had two years ago, they have millions of people in their communities, but we didn't have the tools or the technology to you know, invite them into the seeds movement. So we just failed at being able to do that. And that's something I wish that we could have done better. And instead of just wishing that we could do it better, I want to actually do it better. Um, and this is our opportunity to be able to do that. Um, to better compensate diversity. So that's what I was talking about before. So before it was just HIFA was the only organization that was able to you know, accurately reflect out contributions to it. Um, but now with the Seeds Commons launching, and we'll be able to talk about that a little bit more in tomorrow's session, this proposal for a relaunch considers the seeds commons from the outset and actually provides a lot more alliance tokens or alliance share rewards for all of those seeds commons organizations. So right now, HIFA has 20% of the total supply of seeds. That was HIFA's reward for all the work that is done and for launching seeds initially. So this proposal is actually give another 20% to all of the seeds commons organizations so that they can have an equal share in helping us get to go live. Um, so it's a, to better compensate that reality of what actually happened. Um, offer the community for uh, an opportunity for quote ground floor pricing. So we actually built in a, a cap. So this is something that we wanted to be as a regenerative economic system for someone to not be able to get you know ten thousand x um, return on their investment. So that's why we said seed starts at one penny and we're looking for a dollar 30 price. So what that looks like is you can get, you know, 130 X on your investment if you got in at the very bottom to where we're headed, right? Um, versus something like Bitcoin, which started off at fractions of a penny and went up to tens of thousands of dollars, right? Um, so we're actually capping that, but we got to 10 cents before we were able to really offer this opportunity to enough people, in my opinion. Um, I would like to see tens of thousands of people be able to have that opportunity rather than just a few thousand that have had it so far. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of reset that and offer it again to all of the regenerators of the world who we didn't yet give them an invite into seeds. Um, this is also 
to give more seeds to those who have taken risks to support seeds so far. So this is to reprice all of the seeds up till now at a penny as part of this proposal. Um, and of course, this could be shifted. This is just the, the proposal that we're approaching this to say, if you've bought seeds so far, then we want to value them at a cent. We want to say that you've probably taken on equal risks so far, and we want to make sure everyone's being really well regarded and rewarded for helping us get to this point that we got. Um, the last piece that's the, one of the biggest things here is to move all the campaign seeds that have been distributed as liquid seeds um, to D seeds and figure out a different way to compensate that value there. Um, some campaigns were distributed and weren't actually used. So they're just sitting in someone's account. And maybe, and actually a couple of these people have actually left and they're not part of seeds anymore, but there's still a large number of seeds sitting there. Um, or a whole lot of different things happened with campaigns that weren't actually part of the original economics of this. Um, and long story short, what happened, I mean, a lot of you have seen this, the sale price that Haifa was selling seeds at was ended up being a lot higher than the price that people were selling them on um, secondary markets. And a big reason is because we are compensating people in liquid seeds. We're paying people in seeds and saying, hey, you can use this to you know, pay for rent or pay for food. But in order for them to do that, they had to sell these seeds for dollars. So we created this constant you know, pressure to sell seeds without there necessarily being a reflection to buy those seeds. So that's why our economics started getting off and we started seeing a drop in the price of seeds. Um, so part of this relaunch is to actually reconnect those feedback loops so that we can have a growing price of seeds that holds its value rather than one that's losing value. I know that's a huge topic. I tried to unpack it really quickly, um, but it's unpacked really clearly in the document. So please just go through and read that if you want to get a better understanding. Um, but really, you know, long story short, we're wanting to reset how the campaigns have been run so far. Um, another big reason for that is we've had a lot of complaints about how broken the governance system is working. Um, so part of this relaunch is assuming that over the next three months, we condense all of the different ideas that we've had about how governance could work, and actually get that built and launch it at the same time. So that as we start making decisions, we're making it from a place of, quote, workable governance rather than something that we feel is broken. And it's the same thing with our referendum for our constitution. So many people told me that they couldn't figure out how to actually vote on the constitution. So how can we say this is really decentralized governance if we had technological barriers where people couldn't participate in the governance process? So this is part of some of the, the levels of immaturity that I think Seeds was going through, um, which to me merits us just resetting and doing it again, but trying to do that in the most fair way possible. Um, yeah, I'll probably pause there. So this is the, the general form of what we are trying to do here. Um, oh yeah, some other cool things that we want to fund is setting up the gratitude pot. So this is something we probably would have done with Seeds 1.0 if we had the gratitude token available, if we had that process working. Um, so what we're planning on doing with Seeds 2.0 is actually set aside a large pool of seeds to fund gratitude. So we can make participating in gratitude very meaningful. So you can actually earn a significant number of seeds participating in that. Um, and that'll be nice because I think gratitude could be a really powerful way of distributing value and reflecting value out to people who are showing up to this community. So we want to make sure that we're putting a lot of value behind that token. The other one is launching the, the region launch prize. So this is any region that gets to the 144 active citizens. They can get a 500,000 seeds um, bonus budget to start funding regeneration in the region. And these are seeds that they can use for financing proposals. So all of those proposals that we've seen come so far that are about funding different projects. Um, we believe that it would be, well, well, I believe, and some other people agree with me, um, that those would be better to be run by regions. So this is actually designing that process in. This is, look, if you set up a region, you get some seeds, and then start using that within your region um, to fund whatever proposals your region wants to fund. Um, yeah, some other things. What is Seeds 2.0 technically? Technically, this is a fork of Seeds, because we can never change Seeds balances through governance. So this is the promise of blockchain that no one can ever come in here and steal your money away. So we can't actually say that we're going to redistribute how seeds have landed without us actually forking seeds and making a new token. So this is just the technicalities of it. So if anyone's sitting in here saying like, whoa, actually, you're taking my seeds away. No, we are not. And we can't actually do that. In order for this proposal to work, we're going to have to create an entirely new seeds token and then redistribute that one back out to previous holders of previous seeds tokens. Um, so that's the idea of a fork, is a fork is just where it splits and creates more diversity. 
um, which also means that no one's obligated to participate in this. If we did actually launch this project and we do fork seeds and you don't like how seeds 2.0 is and you prefer seeds 1.0, then you can stay with seeds 1.0. And if a significant community stays with seeds 1.0, then it can continue to exist. Um, some working examples of this is Ethereum. For those who know, um, Ethereum at one point had this big hack and half the community is like, hey, let's reverse that hack. And the other half of the community was like, no, you know, code is law, the hack should stay, we shouldn't reverse it. Um, and then Ethereum actually split. And then it was Ethereum and then Ethereum Classic. Um, I think we're kind of at a similar stage right now where we're saying, look, we're planning on relaunching it. Um, and if we don't get community, you know, complete consensus and not everyone's happy with this, that's okay because we're having the freedom to be able to choose which protocol you actually want to be a part of. Um, and that's also what's so important about blockchain is that it gives you that fundamental freedoms where you get to choose if you want to be part of the different fork, or you can even propose an entirely different fork yourself. And if enough people in the community join you, then maybe that's the fork that actually wins. And this is how these types of systems actually evolve is they can keep forking out and creating more diversity, which is how life evolves is through this forking process. Um, that's probably really complex, but I'll leave it there. Um, what we're planning on doing is then modifying this proposal. So we've set this out. This is just our best guess of what needs to happen. Uh, but we really want to actively engage the community now and evolve this as much as we can up until the November new moon. And then we'll put it up for a proposal. If all the citizens of Seeds pass this and say, yes, this is the proposal that we want, then we're going to call this an uncontested fork which just means we're going to transition everything over and we're going to assume everyone's happy with this fork and move over. Um, if the proposal doesn't pass, then this becomes a contested fork, which means the community isn't fully happy with it and unified behind it, which means that it might actually split, but we can get more into that later. Um, cool, some key dates for this particular proposal is the ending price for that one cent seeds was actually yesterday. So that's why there is all this secrecy because we didn't want word getting out for people to be able to have insider knowledge to be able to get a special price that they only knew about. So in order to get rid of this idea of an insider knowledge, um, we kept the council really small and they didn't have a chance to buy seeds. And so that's what this was you know, all about. Uh, the ending date for that seeds two cent price, which is what we're proposing here is actually when the relaunch happens. So this is our ability to go back and say, okay, look, if anyone wants to contribute value to seeds, we want to let them get in at the ground floor pricing. So yes, this changes like the valuation of seeds on the secondary market, but seeds itself as a protocol hasn't lost value necessarily. If anything, it's gained value. So all we're really doing is saying we're changing the price of which we're going to be selling seeds, not actually changing how valuable those seeds are. Because we don't really know how valuable a seed is until it really gets on the secondary markets. So for some context, if we're selling seeds at a penny, how we're valuing the entire seeds ecosystem is around $3 million or 30 million, depending on how you price it. But when you look at crypto markets, you know, 30 million and 3 million would put us in the top 2000 projects or something to that effect. Um, so depending on how you might look at this, you'd say, oh, that's a really good price, which is actually what we wanted to design because we wanted to be able to decentralize abundance. That's a big tool of what seeds is all about. It's to be given all the regenerators of the world out there and ability to grow abundance and grow value themselves. Um, and that only works as if um, they actually get a really good price to do that. So the ending date for the two cent price would be when we actually relaunch. Um, also, when we look at the list of how many people hold seeds, uh, I forget the actual number, but I think there's like 400 or 500 or something to that effect that own at least 15,000 seeds. I think that's uh, a little bit egregious in my opinion. Um, so we wanted to further decentralize that out and say anyone who's a resident or citizen right now would get a bonus of seeds. So we'll say, you know, thank you, you've showed up so far. We want to distribute out more seeds to everyone who's taken that step. Um, but we don't just want to stop there. What I would love to see us evolve in this proposal is different ways that we can also give bonuses. So Lisa was talking about, hey, we're working with people who are on the ground actually building circular economies. They're using it to buy and sell food. They're creating a community, like they're using it but they stayed a visitor, so they wouldn't be eligible to this bonus. But we could actually look at it and say, okay, well, what if everyone who's done 20 transactions with 10 different people, so they're actually using it, let's give them a bonus too, or whatever. We can come up with all different ways that we want to distribute value to the community and create a bonus for doing that. 
So this is where we can get really creative, I think. Um, where we're proposing to complete the discussion and actually put up a proposal is by the November new, November new moon. So by November 4th is when we're gonna try to integrate as much as we can and actually put this up for a vote. And then the official launch of Seeds 2.0 is set for the December solstice on the 21st of December. Um, yeah, so that is a whole lot. So that's what we were wanting to bring to the table today is this idea that we can reset, relaunch Seeds, redesign what the foundations look like, bring in a new governance system and actually launch that by this relaunch point so that we're operating within the new governance framework within this new Seed system. Um, okay, I'm going to pause there. If there's any really pressing questions, um, put your hand up. Actually, let me let me go to the whole view again. Let's try to do another vote. Um, there's three different votes that we can take right now. We can leave it as a big group right now and field all the questions as a community and just discuss as an open container of 63 people. Um, so that's one route. Second route is we can break into breakout groups of five people and we can discuss this proposal in groups and then come back and harvest it. Um, actually, I'll just leave it at those two. So do we want to stay together or go into breakout groups? If you want to go into breakout groups, give a thumbs up. If you want to stay together in this one community, then give a heart. Saying mostly hearts. So then we're going to stay together as a community. So if you want to ask any questions or give any feedback to this proposal or add anything to this conversation, then go ahead and put your hand up. Awesome. Uh, Lala, Tina. Hi. Uh, this is interesting and exciting and brings a lot of <laughs> questions. Um, so forking, my understanding of forking <laughs> is that it's kind of like a break off and it's sort of like a clone almost of the system that it's coming from. It sort of has everything inherent like a fractal. And so my deep concern is that we're going to bring some of our dysfunctions into, into that restructuring. And so I'm just um, bringing a voice or it's a sort of like I'd like to make sure we, we put attention to, to the way we're all discovering seeds ongoing through this environment that we've been part of, which has been kind of on some levels um, rough, you know, but, 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 but fun and awesome and as it should be, you know. And I guess I'm going to put it in a context. So I spent last week hanging out with a bunch of cryptos and really going deep on some stuff. And I was really... There were, you know, 100, 300 people there, and most of them had not heard of seeds. The ones who had had concerns. So I was there as an ambassador in a, an ambassador capacity for seeds, because I believe in the currency. That's why I'm here. I think it's one of the most elegant currencies out there, and so I hold sacred space for that. Um, at the same time. All right, so there was somebody there speaking and said very to the whole group, I don't think we've got this social token thing down yet because when you have inherent value attached to a currency, then everything that springs from that holds a reflection of those values. And I thought that was profound. And I feel like that is indeed what we're practicing here at Seeds. The limitation of what we're about to step into, not limitation, but like, I think we have to bring certain awarenesses and we all bring them. And I think if we can figure out a place where we can make all of that visible, it would be, it would serve us the best because I've also learned that it's so much easier to Dow than what we're doing here. It's almost like we formed an organization around this currency and now we're having to figure out how to come together through this Dow system. And um, I just want to, to not forget that it's the seed, it's the currency that we're really focusing on. It's putting it into circularity. It's putting it into communities that can use it. It's making sure that we're making this currency available. It's not about how good we are at dowing because I'm telling you we're not that good at dowing um, as far as I see it. 
<laughs> but I love the currency and let's not forget our focus there. I could say more, but I won't. <laughs> I'm going to abuse my facilitator privileges, but also my role of sharing this proposal because I've been one of the key authors of it. Um, so to reflect back, Tina, the, the forking thing is really important because we're not necessarily forking our community and our culture. We're technically forking the token because there's no other way to do that. We can't steal anyone's money ever. So in order to redistribute balances, we have to technically fork. But that doesn't necessarily mean our community has to fork. And in the future, if we do get to sizes where our community is forking, that's healthy. That's what every living system does. It forks to create diversity. If you look at the tree of life, it all sprung from one place and forks into all the diversity we see today. And we'll see that happening. And that's something that could probably be encouraged. Um, second thing, if we are forking and we have two tokens, that means that we actually have two different tokens we can do things with. So one of the ideas that came up with this you know, the council that we we're talking about is actually, okay, well, what about with seeds 1.0, the seeds we currently have, what if we launch go live now so that the harvest is actually working? So everything we're waiting for the go live moment to do, let's just run that now for the seeds 1.0 and see how that works. So we can start experimenting real time with what, you know, go live might look like rather than waiting another year or however long it takes to get there to start testing the harvest itself. And then seeds 2.0 could be that more stable one. So seeds 1.0 becomes more of a test experiment environment. And then seeds 2.0 becomes something that's just a stable store value that's you know, a little bit less um, dynamic and experimental. Um, so that's just one proposal that's come out of this working group. And that's something for us to be able to think through of um, different ways that we can take this relaunch. Um, thank you, Tina. Let's go to Paolo. Thank you. So thanks for the proposal. I think it made sense to present it before. My feeling of the proposal is that it is divisive in the sense that my, the parts of me were starting to have a debate around if this was a good idea or a bad idea. So I felt the part, the various parts of me. So I think this is on the field. And then I was wondering why. And my, my feeling of why is that it seems to to, to be a disconnect between the beautiful world we're trying to build together and the realization of that in the tokenomics. Because I feel that the tokenomics proposal is coming from a problem solving mindset. And a lot of those problems are real and they make sense to be solved. But if we understand the proposals that we, uh, when, when we spoke about the beautiful world we were uh, dreaming of, and that seems to be at the grasp of our fingertips. The question becomes, how can we use seeds to better coordinate that world? Because we can think of seeds as a coordinating mechanism. And the question I'm bringing to somehow to evaluate and contribute to the, the proposal, knowing that something needs to change and it, it, has, it is related to tokenomics, is how can this tokenomics be a better coordination system and remove the hard constraints of our present economy, mainly the scarcity design, right? And what do we need to do collective for that to be a reality in a, transi a transition phase? And I don't think that some of, although I agree with some of the elements, there's a problem of distribution that we could solve, but I don't think there are the deep arguments that would allow us really to better coordinate ourselves in doing what we need, which is a part of seeds, but it's seeds as an enabler, right? Rather than seeds as the full capacity to, to do it, because we want to support us and many others that are, like Lisa mentioned, underground already doing the work and could benefit from a better coordination mechanism that has the, the side of a, a financial system, right? Ooh, a very present, um, Paolo, and yes, it is coming from a place of these are problems, let's solve them. So that's the foundation from which we're starting with, but that's why we have, you know, two months from here to be able to modify that, evolve on that, and, you know, change it. But the proposal is complete in itself that it could be enacted, but I don't think it's complete as in this is what's embodying what's best for the community yet. I don't think we're quite there yet or even maybe even close. Um, so that was very tangible and present. Thank you, Paolo. 
Um, and that's where I really, really hope for us to continue the dialogue and continue evolving this proposal from now until we actually propose it up. Um, Terry. Um, Reiki, you, you suggested that there's a new governance system as part of this proposal, but you didn't say much about what that governance system was going to be like. Could you tell us more about what the governance system, how it's going to be different? Uh, I cannot because it's, it's still in the ether. There's a whole lot of ideas of what it could be. There's like three different documents of a bunch of breakdown of what it could be. Anyway, it's not clear yet. And we haven't made a proposal for what Seeds Governance 2.0 looks like. Um, okay. I, I have okay. a couple ideas myself, but it's not grounded. So this is something that's gonna have to happen over the next couple months. So it's okay. agenda item number two on our list of what's most important is to actually work out that Seeds Governance 2.0, what that looks like. Um, okay. All we know right now is the current one pisses a lot of people off. <laughs> well, uh, the uh, you know we've had conversations in the strategic uh, you know sensing group about uh, the governance system at times, and um, uh, what was his name? Uh, Ho uh, Holo, uh, Holon. Uh, when I forget what his first name was. Julio. 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 Thank you. Hi there. No, thank you. So Julio gave a strong argument for not polarizing decentralization with centralization and, and having, um, you know, having a hierarchical kind of a system in order to efficiently get something done. And we've talked about this a lot. And so one of the things that a number of people seem to be suggesting, and I also seem to be noticing, but I don't know enough to be absolutely sure about my assessment here, is that if you polarize one good thing with another good thing, then you, that's not a good thing. What you want to do is you want to find a way to prioritize. And so I believe strongly that what needs to happen is to have a system that is under the leadership of the decentralized system that can be an efficient way for there to be a governance process. I mean, I think the invention of shoes was a very good idea. It was a much better idea than putting leather all over the entire earth. You know, a flush toilets was a very good idea. I think we should continue to have flush toilets. You know, I think a board of directors and an executive, you know, that does day-to-day -day stuff is a good idea. I don't think we should be afraid of that system, but do give priority to efficiency. Americans only know it as a power system, you know, but people around the world know it as an efficiency system that is under the leadership of some of people who are operating from more of an elder perspective. So I just want to throw that into the hopper for what to think about when it comes to governance to not polarize you know, an efficiency system with a decentralized system, but to prioritize and give priority to the decentralized system and second priority to the efficiency systems to get something done. The, ex I'll leave, the last thing I'll say is if a group of people are in my house and my house starts to catch on fire and somebody, we all need to get out the back door, I think everybody would like me to lead them to the back door. So there's a place for leadership and we should not be afraid to have leadership. I think what is an absolute fact is the conversation on governance is going to get really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and just like with our experience, you know, experiments with you know, you know, new economic systems, what I recommend is that we reduce what we think things ought to be and we try to experiment within safe bounds as much as possible. Because we're only going to see what works after we try it as a community. Um, and to be able to have a diversity of different experiments running at the same time. So that's why the, the do DAO model is really interesting because each DAO can try their own governance system and be able to keep it isolated within that you know, DAO. So if it works or doesn't work, then that's an isolated experiment. Um, and I also think seeds can have a little bit of both where like the seeds commons is actually coming together to have that you know, focal point that's intended to move things forward and coordinate the different organizations. Uh, but the seeds commons itself is completely decentralized in how it's formed. So I think it's really important that we, you know, if we do put people into positions of leadership, maybe we want to do that, maybe we don't, but that if we do do that, that it's always a democratic system to be able to add or remove those people. But anyway, and, and, governance is a whole other thing, and that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I fully agree with that last statement. I really want to emphasize the importance of having um, a body that is able to remove people that aren't appropriate. That's a democratic body. Uh, let's send it to Mark. Thanks, Terry.
Sure. First, I want to just uh, say how amazing Lala Garden's uh, face is uh, in all of this uh, uh, joyful conversation. <laughs> this is a space of play. This is a space of creativity. This is a space of listening and of uh, being joyful um, uh, I, and being appreciative and grateful. Um, uh, I want to uh, first uh, say that, that um, I did participate in the council uh, for the last uh, a couple of weeks. Um, uh, since uh, Raiki put forth uh, the very first uh, proposal outline. Um, uh, I know the council as the council of nine. So this is the first time I've heard of it as a council of 11. So I'm not sure exactly uh, what that means. Um, second, uh, I think if you look at the very top of this document that uh, Raiki gave a list to, um, I think it's important to uh, read the second sentence. However, no consensus was reached. Um, I have um, uh, do not support uh, the economics uh, that are outlined here. I think it is too complex. I think it should be more simple, but I do not feel like it is appropriate for uh, a council of 11 or nine or seven to say what it should be. Um, I think that it needs to become uh, a working group that will uh, be able to uh, evaluate and then come back to the community. Um, so I feel like there's an immense amount of, of ideas that can be digested over the coming days, and then a working group can be established, and then we can uh, put together a proposal. I also do not feel the necessity for a fork. I know Reiki's explained to me numerous times, as has Nick, as to a fork is not something that is scary. A fork is not something that is anything but a technology. Um, but I actually think that uh, a fork is not necessary. My background is as a technologist and a mathematician. And so I think that we need more conversations along that line. Uh, I, so consensus was not reached. The council was a group of people that are uh, playing, that are having fun, that are exploring together, that appreciate each other. The council did, uh, um, uh, this document was uh, uh, a, con uh, a consensus process, but the final version was not a consensus to even present this document. So the document has been presented. It is a starting conversation place and we'll see what emerges from here. So I love you all, thank you. And uh, thank you so much for that, Mark. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna replay the dialogue that happened in that council on uh, a discourse chat where we can discuss this and dive into it. Because uh, there was a lot of juicy discussion that happened, so we want to throw that in there. Um, and the last thing I want to add to that is it's a proposal to say we're going to move this forward just as kind of a fail safe in case we don't reach any sort of consensus with the community. It doesn't result in us stopping and not being able to make progression and movement. Because what we, you know, what at least I'm sensing in the community is we are starting to kind of lose momentum. So this is a way of you know being able to reset it and say we do have a quick timeline where we are going to execute on this as best as we can, because it might not be possible for us to reach consensus. And maybe that's not even what we want to do. Um, but either way, this is still for us to unpack and explore and dive into. Um, thanks, Mark. Uh, Max. Thank you. Um, one thing that came to me is like, can we make it into a spork? That we have a spoon and a fork at the same time, because I really like a spoon. And it's definitely the superior <laughs> utensil that I would use. But in all seriousness, I, uh, I do really like new things. Um, and so I'm, I'm quite excited about that. Uh, new, new ways to, to explore here. Um, one thing that came to me in terms of forking is, why don't we just make a fake one that we can play with, that we can just try things out and actually use as a playground and have more the spirit of we can't really do wrong there we just try things out actually doing it and uh, there are, everyone can decide themselves to just participate in that actual game like this is an actual game that we play that we end at some point when we try things out because i see that the three months uh is way too short for something important like this. It feels like that's never gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, but okay, uh, we can be ambitious like that. Uh, but yeah, trying things out, play with that more than seeing it as like, this is how it's going to be. And uh, 
everyone has to follow uh, or we don't do it at all. Um, it doesn't have to be like that, I think. And I also want to honor uh, um, that you, the 11 uh, or nine or whatever, uh, did that. Um, I think it's, it's, it's very cool. It's uh, set, setting things in motion, which I greatly appreciate. And I see again that there is the tendency of a lot of people to just hear something and be like, no, I don't want this and no, 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 before even really having looked into it, really understanding what's going on, what is happening. Um, so uh, just to, again, create within us maybe that a little bit more space, a little bit more breathing air that uh, like, hey, maybe we just look into it and see it as a playful playful, beautiful thing that we have now, an opportunity uh, to yeah, build sand castles and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm very excited and grateful for that. Um, and thank you all for being here. Love seeing your faces. Uh, 100%. Thanks, Max. And I, I really love the idea of initiating play. I know this is also a contentious idea, but of, you know, if we do do this fork and we have seeds one and two, and then seeds one being that playground, and actually could embody kind of, you know, polar opposites. You know, seeds two could be something that's, you know, appreciating in value. We're looking at getting it on exchanges. We want it to be highly liquid, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe seeds one is we don't care about buying or selling it. It's not meant to be traded with fiat currencies. We don't put it on other exchanges. And this is just something that's issued into the community. We try to stay in the community. It could be two different extremes. Um, so this is something that just is possible. And if our minds can handle this and we don't have too much confusion, great. Um, but anyway, we're always just planting seeds here. Um, back to you, Tina. Unless your hand is up again. No, it's up. No, yeah, it's up again. Um, I'm trying to contain everything I'm hearing within my, how I sense the value um, of seeds particularly is I'm devoted to the currency. And I feel like this is a token centric community. Um, I also sort of am now starting to see how some of my original perceptions of what was going on are seem to seem to be some, somewhat validated and in carrying into this 2.0. And there's some concerning things about it that include um, because I feel like it was kind of an experiment, like the seeds in general was kind of an experiment. You guys sort of like, you know, you, you were as Haifa were kind of dealing with the evolution of this community that was building around the token, the actual token, because people saw it as valuable and effective. And it really is. Um, and then once in this, in the, in the culture, you know, I started to realize how sort of insular it was because it was kind of almost like posed as an experiment, whether it was by Haifa, whatever it's, it's a secular enclosed kind of a system that doesn't have a lot of communication with the outside world. And like, when I finally like broached that and like got into that world, I was like, oh my God, there's so much here that we could be learning from each other. There's so much more that's actually happening in the world to do with all kinds of tokens, all kinds of systems, all kinds of sophisticated wallets, all kinds of tools. And literally I witnessed how two DAOs identified that they were the alike and did this merging process. And in one day became part of the same ecosystem simply because of the, the efficacy of DAOs. Like I, I saw it and I'm like, okay, so we've got Seeds the Token, which is amazing. We've got this community of people who don't even know what Seeds is. And if they do, they don't like it to be perfectly honest with you. Um, if we fork now and just create a currency that can go live without supporting systems that are rooted in yes, DAO, yes, communication, yes, letting go of this, this membrane situation that's way too impenetrable. The only thing that makes blockchain real in my estimation is it's full on transparency. If we're not practicing transparency now, if I'm just learning who the, it doesn't matter. I'm not angry. I'm not that. I'm just like cautionary. Okay, so let's look at transparency. We've got the currency, which is amazing. We've got communities that are just now coming together that have been supportive of seeds that are trying to sort of like hold this, this amazing capacity to both come together as true DAOs 
true decentralization, not hierarchical. That's not the way nature works. Nature does not work through hierarchy. It works through complexity. Complexity is a coordination. I learned a powerful word this last week. It's called coordination culture. Are we operating within a coordinated culture? No, I don't see that yet. And so I feel like if we're going to come together as a community supporting this amazing currency, we have to learn how to coordinate and not just coordinate amongst each other and with ourselves, but with the outside world, because there are, I, I, I was trying to tell the good news about how seeds divorced itself from God right? Which is Haifa. And everybody was like, oh my God, really? It did? It's not, it's not, it's not a, it's not a hierarchy anymore. It's not centralized. I'm like, yeah, it's starting to not be. And now, and now you're bringing in centralized language again, and it's alarming. And I'm going to stop there. This is very alive. Let's, we need another space for this. So if you feel so inclined, Tina, uh, we could actually set up a working group throughout this roundtable. So maybe we can do that in the next couple of days because I think this is really something that's worth diving into um, and focusing on with this transition because as we move to relaunching seeds, this is our opportunity as a community. Like this proposal that's up right now, this is just a foundation. This is saying, here's a working thing to start with. But actually the seeds can community, anyone can fork it. Anyone can come up because we are decentralized and say, actually, we think this proposal stinks. We're gonna do something completely different. And maybe this proposal is coming from Haifa members like myself and the seeds community doesn't like that at all. Well, then anyone in seeds can actually come up with a different way of relaunching seeds 2.0. And that might be really awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, that is alive right now that my, my deepest intention for this seeds 2.0 launch to be a community creative project so that it is our creation story where the community came together and redecided what the launch looks like because Seeds 1.0 was launched and designed by Haifa. Seeds 2.0 can be launched and designed by the greater Seeds community. Um, okay, so we have 15 minutes left. We have five hands up. So I think we're gonna be able to get through them all and then we can close out this beautiful session. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for all this uh, meeting. I love it. I want to endorse the, the, the opportunity to, to, to be together in this 2.0 to rebuild the structure, like, like not having uh, movement building as something already made it, but creating a new structure around the, 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 the actual, actual challenge that we have. And I, I have a question. It's about the, uh, the economic, uh, because when we start the 2.0 seeds, we are going to have an, uh, uh, the price going to be uh, one cent, right? So what I want to ask is, we have a liquidity for, for this 2.0 seeds. And because the price is going to be down, if we're going to build it together again, the price is going to be up and we will be more uh, a solid. And for those that just have to wait for, for price going up again and, and with the truck that we, we must have. And thinking about that, I think that the structure that, the structure that we need it's from the, the communities, local communities that have the conditions for seeds, the, the right uh, uh, use for, for, for seeds as a, a, as a currency that not, not will be exchanged uh, for no, no reason or just for individual reasons. Or, or That's my question goes for this direction because I see the, that for using the governance uh, as, as a, uh, as a complete thing, we ha you have to, to be with the economic, with that uh, with the same economic. We cannot use a seeds point one point zero just for governance if it is has not uh, connected with a local uh, uh, building and structuring from for with this currency. You know, uh, the the economic and governance together it's the the, the experiment. We, we cannot use 2.0 for, for economic and, and, and governance with 1.0 because what we are uh, 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 reaching here is tangible local community that's going to use this currency. So it's making me 
thinking about it. I want to share. Thank you. Sorry for my. <laughs> No, um, no need to be sorry at all. And that's an argument against having both currencies exist because that could create that you know, dichotomy that's maybe not healthy. Um, currently in the proposal, there isn't a pitch to have two currencies. So this is something we can just discuss. Also, when we're talking about repricing seeds for seeds 2.0, that has nothing to do with the secondary market price of seeds. And that's not actually saying seeds are worthless. This is just how we're distributing or could be if we go through with this proposal um, seeds 2.0 seeds. It's just looking back and saying, hey, did you spend $500 buying seeds? Cool, we're going to give you X number of tokens then. But when we launch seeds 2.0, it's the seeds commons that are controlling the seed sale. And they could start the price off at 10 cents or 50 cents or whatever they think is valuable. And the secondary market could start it off at a dollar. Like it doesn't actually reset the price because once we launch seeds 2.0, then we're going to let the seeds commons and the secondary markets decide what the price is. And it might it, we don't know what it's going to be after that point. Um, so just want to make that clarity. We, we don't get to control the price. And that was actually a mistake we kind of made with Seeds 1.0 with Haifa doing the seed sale, the Haifa sale rather, that became kind of the de facto price. That was a big mistake um, because then everyone was referencing what Haifa was saying and creating that dichotomy when really it was just, this is what Haifa is selling our seeds at, not this is what seeds are worth. This is what Haifa values those seeds at. But that created a lot of conflict. Um, so this is actually part of the 2.0 proposal is to remove that. Um, anyway, um, Ari, Alan, Lisa, David, and I'm not going to talk anymore. So just you guys run through and pass it off to each other. Um, Ari, if you are still here. Yes, I would like to go ahead. So uh, firstly, uh, thank you, uh, Reiki. You are definitely a hero and I admire you for that. Uh, but definitely I would like to mention that November 4th is too pressing of a deadline for something that 11 members met for quite a few times to come up with this, but then asking thousands of us to come up in 12 days or 13 days to some kind of a consensus. That's definitely a too much of a stretch. So December 4th, or the next new moon is a better pro proposition. The reason being that Solistus can have the region round table again, but more of a conversation that will set up the stage for the voting for something good enough to try, say, uh, what is it, good enough for now, safe enough to try. Thank you. That's just a suggestion. Alan. Thanks, Ari. Okay, uh, thank you. So um, I'd like to really, uh, you know, put this out there to everyone. Um, and that is why it is not just good or, you know, um, if efficient or something convenient to have a better information sharing structure. And, you know, what, what can we do? What is there? you know, what does the system look like to have this easily navigated? Because we've already seen that experiment play out actually, and it's in the democracies that we currently live in. A huge issue is people are allowed to vote, but they have no fucking clue about what's going on. They simply don't. There's so many different things happening that like, you can't be an expert on everything. And obviously, governments are not making an effort to have people know about everything, because that's very inconvenient for their traditional and old power structure. So we've we've seen that play out already. Like that experiment is 100% finished and 100% clear. So um, I really want to just... Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to work on this. So this is something I'm not just saying. This is something we've already contacted people. But... We cannot have this governance that we are imagining, dreaming about, that we want to improve if we do not have easy and easily navigatable information about what is this, what is going on, where can you do what, and who are we cooperating with. Those, that information is, again, it's not about convenience. 
It's about making the governance that we want possible in the first place. And we've seen it in seeds as well. When there are votes on different things, it, to be honest, the majority of people don't really know what's going on and why. So um, it's let's not let's not make the mistake of going down this Republican route, which is just saying, man, if you don't know something, that's your fault. If you're not rich, that's because you're poor and stupid. Uh. So we have to really make and provide something good so that it's easy for people and um something something small that i just want to throw in as well is uh let's not be afraid to talk about negative things because we need to talk about negativity as well and things that don't work to get this whole system working one of the reasons why seeds exists why we're here is not just because we want good and beautiful things but also because we do not want certain things. So I'm gonna just say it, negativity is also a core aspect of seeds. We do not want this earth to be destroyed any further. So let's, let's you know, harmonize negativity and positivity and what we can do with the knowledge of both of these, right? Uh, yeah, that's 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 my 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 two seeds or three. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Lisa. Thank you, Alan. Well said. Um, yeah, I I hear I I heard Reiki say it once today, and I think I've heard it in other places too that we're losing momentum and. For, we might be losing momentum in Discord, we might be losing momentum in the seed sales, but on the ground, we're definitely not. That's where it's really happening. Um, what we're not doing so well yet is showcasing what's happening on the ground. Those are the channels that still need to be worked on. But what is happening there, that's really part of the original intention, at least of what I understand as the original intention of seeds which I know is, I'm not, I have a, might have a different one from some others. And what's happening there, it's not so visible, it's not so wordy, um, but it's actually truly sacred, it's magical, and it's truly regenerative. Um, I also feel like uh, what Mark is saying, a fork or a spork <laughs> sounds a bit scary. Uh, maybe that's, yeah, just a few of us who are like, um, I hear that it's not such a big thing, but still sounds scary. But what I actually would love to see is that we are that we are united, because I, I feel we are. I know we are in our hearts and the way we want to move forward. Um, and then there are so many different things to look at. And I also wanted to echo what what Mark said earlier. We might have been, you know, I'm part of this council, and we might have been called a council. Um, we had enormous conversations the past few weeks around this proposal, um, brought up some really beautiful, incredible ideas. Uh, we have definitely not reached consensus. We're not aligned in what is written here at all, or I'm not. Um, and I feel that the proposal that is being presented also doesn't really reflect all the voices. I do know that a lot of changes have been made and it's been, um, I know that uh, Reiki and several people in the Council have really tried to bring in the different voices and bring together something coherent. And I think that's also why we're here now, um, to, to bring more voices in and to, to find an alignment and also, yeah, really make sure that, uh, that the voices are heard. Um, and so that's where I come in again with uh, pretty much what I said before. This is not about us, the people on this call. Um, this is about the whole world, or at least that's what it's about for me. So a little more thought, a little more learning without over dramatizing what a few individuals did with cashing out. The move, move to get onto Uniswap was not a community decision, but now the community is carrying the backlash of that. So let's also give the community time and space to weave this back into the regenerative path. I still feel, and I've also voiced this a few times, um, this proposal, I feel, can do a lot more to take into account all the value that was created by the people on the ground. Um, currently, it, 
I, I feel that it disregards these efforts and might even come very close to punishing or completely overseeing what has been created on the ground. So I'd love to make sure and motivate everybody. Um, let's turn this around and make sure that however we go forward with a fork or a spork or just with seeds 1.0 with better governance and tokenomics, let's reward the real users of seeds. Yeah, and to build on that, I also wanted to squeeze in now that we're sharing the computer, which is practical, good advice. Um, the context where we are in, this is also something that we need to be very mindful and present of. You know, if we're talking about forks, one thing that I want to point out, and I think everybody knows, we, our civilization is going into a fork as we speak right now. So that is also something that we need to be able to agilely prepare for and adapt. And I feel also as part of the Council of, of Nine, where there wasn't alignment in this proposal, that we need to find ways to be more adaptive and, and serve positively what's happening out in the world. And that comes with being having more utility, with having more ways to involve the community. And I feel a little bit of what is here is a bit contractive. It's actually taking away this ability to bootstrap a civilization, which I think is our, our strongest asset that with essentially nothing, we can already form circles of coherence, bioregions, communities taking shape and exchanging their goods and services completely away from the fiat system and the ushery and centralization it carries with it. I think that's the, the larger context that we have that we're all working towards to really create these channels to allow as much people to to step away from from this centralizing rug pull that's going on right now around the planet. And that's also one of the bigger contexts that we need to be prepared for. And that's also something that still is not reflected in the proposal that I would love to, to bring in and find ways to cohere to around. And pass it on to David. Thank you, Franz. And thank you, everybody, for giving me a chance to speak here. I'm very new to SEEDS. Uh, I found out about it well, maybe a month ago. I'm a visitor. Uh, I've been wading into the uh, tsunami or ocean of SEEDS information and learning a lot about it. And I, I would just want to say um, to start that I really appreciate and I'm grateful for the, the care, the thoughts, the intentions, all the work and the values of the people in this group. I truly resonate with the intentions of trying to make the world a better place and to, to create a system in which people can actually act out their values. And so as somebody who is still learning about seeds and who has been thinking about these kinds of alternative economies for quite some time now and thinking a lot about and working toward how do we create massive change? And as, as, as Franz had said earlier on, you know, how do we really communicate this out to other people? Um, I, and, and somebody who has, uh, I guess, a little bit more of an objective view than all of you who have been in the trenches doing this for so long now. Um, I just want to share a little bit of perspective as somebody who is new to this and is looking at seeds as what is the real possibility of this community. Clearly, intention, the intentions are there and the value system is there. And, and if I could um, speak my, my perspective right now, which I would say is very limited in a sense or incomplete in the message that I want to bring here. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge that all of the challenges and the problems that people are trying to figure out in this conversation need to be addressed in one way or another. I'll speak in a few of the analogies that have already been shared here. And one is that um, we talk about the butterfly. The butterfly is almost to me like the go live, post go live stage. And right now it seems like most of the discussion here is thinking like caterpillars. And the, the caterpillar does not view the world in a different way uh, or the same way as the butterfly. Um, and to use maybe another analogy that I often use um, is that seeds is almost like a mouse right now, right? And, but the mouse wants to be an elephant. They're both mammals, but you can never take a mouse and make it to the size of an elephant. Right? You need different structural components to be able to get to that place 
where you have this massively active global community or, or people really, things really happening at scale. And what I think probably, what I, what I think about when I look at seeds is that there needs to be some much broader stroke kinds of guidelines so that the, the world community can do its thing within this new framework. I do not believe that seeds will be able to, if it is successful, be able to monitor everything that goes on it. You just wanna make sure that people are moving in the right direction. The mouse looks at everything with its whiskers and analyzes everything, whereas you know, the butterfly or the eagle looks at things from a much higher perspective. And so I guess what, I, what I'm saying here is, I wonder if the thinking needs to happen through a little bit of a different lens that is really much more geared to how do you create the most massive amount of change at first. It's never going to be a perfect system. And there's a lot of effort here to try and find out you know, what are the, the safeguards to make sure that it is as close to perfect as possible. And as I read the seeds guide, I'm very, I'm very impressed by the contingencies and the safeguards to have the system keep from being abused. But I am concerned as somebody one, wondering if I can bring in my network literally of millions of people maybe who want to have to participate in this kind of economy is whether we'll ever actually get there because the conversation is still really rather, I'd say, insular at this point in time. And it needs to be able to get to the point where it's, it's at, a, at a go live stage. And so it's not that I want to discount at all the concerns that are being raised here, but I think the thinking needs to rise to a different level. In a sense, so uh, you know, and I'm I'm happy to participate in that. I say this with only a, a tiny amount of knowledge and a lot of ignorance about what goes on in seeds, right now. Um, but uh, I'm very interested to participate further and understand how can essentially, you know, the conversation break out of this thinking that it has right now or this way of thinking, because I, I'm as I said, I, I'm I'm concerned that what will happen is go live will just be pushed further and further into the future, and as you know, as, as to say we need to make something happen out in the world and there are plenty of people out there once seeds becomes a thing or is go live people are just going to want to use the economy they're not going to you know it's like i don't need to know how to program a blockchain to use my laptop they just want to be able to exist in it and trust basically the system works and it will evolve so i'll, I'll stop there thank you Oh, thank you. Uh, Miguel, I will leave space for you after, but we have ran over our time. Um, I think that was an epic place to leave it with, David. Um, I just want to kind of ground us with in some next steps. Um, some final thoughts. This proposal, it, it's not um, even close to being perfect. I want to keep reiterating that. We're stuck between this like rock and a hard place where we're trying to talk in a council of getting you know, as best of an original proposal as possible to the community, knowing that it needed to go through this process before it became anything fully formed. Um, so it's, I really, really want to make sure that's clear that this proposal is a starting point, um, just getting the conversation going. And I think it'll also be really valuable for us to treat this a little bit like we did the Constitution. So we can have calls probably every two weeks. We can get together and make sure we're adding more energy and momentum into this to make you know make sure we're actually cultivating that wisdom, translating it into something that's tangible, and making sure we're moving forward with it. Um, David, I mean that's what you <laughs> what you brought up just here about thinking from a higher perspective. That's what we attempted to do at the beginning of this call, is we wanted to take it really high, but then I feel like everyone was just really confused, <laughs> so we needed to ground it, and then I think we can go back up. Um, all right, so, so next steps, we're going to be taking this proposal and putting it on a discourse. What I really, really encourage just for our communication patterns here, um, try not to do idle chit chat back and forth. Make a comment and make a comment about something you would like to see changed. Um, something about the future that you want to bring into it. One part about the proposal that you would actually like to see changed in order to amend that to make that happen. So try as best as you can to actually cohere your comment and thought into something that could be added into the proposal. Uh, so that way you can significantly reduce the burden on people who are gonna be collating this information to be able to do that. Um, cool. Uh, Miguel, you had something else you wanted to say? Maybe I can give you 
30 seconds to share that and then we can close out. Today. Yeah, uh, I want to be very fast. Uh, just one feedback is one person who, um, like uh, most of us just now heard about uh, what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so I wrote it in the chat, but it's just a feedback uh, for me to whom, whomever is involved uh, in this uh, proposal is that where I feel a little bit of tension right now um, at the end of the conversation is um, that on one side, my mind gets the information, ah, it's just a, a very small change on the technology side and it's all not going to affect uh, very much. So then I think, okay, uh, I trust the people who are into the technology, no problem. And then I get the information, oh, that could be a major thing for the whole ecosystem. It could damage the delicate uh, threads of trust of uh, what we already have built. And then I'm again like, okay, what's happening now? And then reading the, about this is a great reset for all of us. So just as a feedback that there, I would wish a little bit more clarity in that. And also the last thing I wanted to mention um, that uh, to pick up what Ellen was sharing, I also have the feeling that there are things that are not really clearly spoken about like the abuse that has happened up to now where funds have been uh, misallocated. And I think a little bit, I have the, the feeling that sometimes it's like feeling like a knee jerk reaction to that. Like, okay, something bad has happened. We have to fix that. And out of that space, it's not really deeply felt into. So that's uh, also, I would rather uh, have a deep sensing into what actually happened there to speak about openly. And then to see that we come from a space of tranquility and centeredness and then take a decision from that one. So that's my, my sharing. Thank you very much for giving me the space. Ooh, thank you. Um, it's gonna take us a moment to come up with some more clear next steps. And then of course we can share that. So we can come back with this council and see the best way we can move forward from here. Um, but, but, but just the closing thought here, this is what we make of it. Um, if you don't like the idea of a great reset, if that scares you, then don't frame it that way. This is just a way for us to be able to evolve as a community because it would just be completely ridiculous if the way that we set it up from the get-go actually ended up working. The odds of that are slim to none. So the idea that we actually have to learn, adapt, you know, evolve and move forward, that's all we're doing here. So whatever language or framing that's, you know, is most applicable to that, um, all right, I'm gonna let you all go because we're eight minutes over. So I love the conversations that we're having. We could probably keep doing this all day, but I will see you all for the Regenerative Roundtable tomorrow where we're gonna dive into the Seeds Commons and Tyler will be hosting that session. Um, so what we're gonna do is you feel free to unmute yourself and say hi, bye, or make any type of noise that you feel. Hey, Hey, I love everybody. Susan and Walter. Hey, Tyler. One big Everybody. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bart. Bye.